So throughout the years, as this channel has sputtered along, I've reviewed things, I've not reviewed things, said things, and I did not say anything. Have I grown as a reviewer? You know, it's, it's real hard to say. And as far as things I haven't reviewed, that literally every other channel has gotten around to, the Spyderco Shaman. And Blade Ops saw this Shaman-sized hole in my life and asked, if I wanted to whoop up on one for their exclusive upcoming shaman, you know, would I would I like to take a look at it? And of course I said yes. Now some may think that reviewing the shaman at this point might be worthless or a stupid waste of everyone's time. And if you even have that question, you don't really know what the channel is about, okay? Because it's actually very smart. And it it's also a giant waste of people's time. You know, both can be true. And furthermore... It's currently not possible to get negative views on YouTube. Can we get negative views on YouTube? Now, as long as Spyderco keeps making exclusives of their knives so they can resell the knives to the dudes who already own that same knife, but in a slightly different steel and slightly different G10, Z-list channels like this are going to make videos about them and there's nothing you can do about it. And I have grown as a reviewer, though, okay? If I would have reviewed this four years ago, I'd have called the Blade Ops LMAX Gray G10 a sprint run, and a subscriber in the comments would have, oh, actually, it's an exclusive. Or at a sprint run, limited quantities would have been sent out to many dealers. Exclusives are just sent to one. So Reply Guy's right, though, and I'd like to thank him for his comment. S sorry, I guess uh, two years ago I learned the difference. But we're going to look at the dimensions here of this Blade Ops exclusive. Now, is Blade Ops like, Blade Ops? Or is it more like, Blade Ops? Blade operations, logistics. I think business logistics are fun and interesting. I went to business school. Oh yeah, nerd. I went to the school of hard knocks and you're gonna get your ass beat you keep talking like that and cooking with them seed oils. You got business smart, you got tactical smart. So the Spider Coast Shaman, sorry, Shaman, seen here as an exclusive. We all know Spider Co exclusives work because of that void inside us. It's deep, it's unrelenting, and a retailer will request a specific steel in G10, and it triggers something in the brain of a Spyderco collector. Hey man, remember the void? Today it's shaman-sized. There's a lot of pieces in the puzzle of the void. Sometimes you feed it with jade, green, G10, and M4, but today it's LMAX and gray G10, and eventually you'll fill it, I promise. Plus, you sent a lot of great emails at work today. You deserve it. Okay, okay, so I exercise very little restraint when buying knives. My spider Clue exclusive habit manifests itself in a different Great Eastern Cutlery cover option habit. I don't know what Osage orange wood is, or even if I'm saying it right, but it sounds nice, and maybe if I score one, I won't cry in front of people at Albertsons today. But one thing I have resisted for years, and it doesn't make a lot of sense to a lot of people, is the Shaman. It's about the size of the paramilitary two, which I only have one of, okay? So, you, I don't have a problem. And the Shaman is like a smoothered, handled Manix 2, which I reviewed way back when. But it's actually neither the Paramilitary 2 or the, the Manix 2. It's from the Native family, which it resembles visually, but larger, like the Paramilitary 2 sized. And it replaces the Native back lock with Spyderco's best lock, the compression lock. So, in my head, it's best suited for a comparison to the Paramilitary 2. I'm not going to be taking notes. I don't know why you didn't compare it to the native chief. So compared to the PM2, there's a few differences. First, the weight. Now we're adding a bit more of an ounce in weight, and my guess is it's due to the stainless steel backspacer and the less distal tapering on the blade stock. The PM2 is much thinner as it gets toward the tip, and I know that some knife guys like their heavier feel to their knives, like uh, this guy here, you know. Surprise, it's under the Buck 110 video. Now fortunately for this guy, the 110 still has a full 2 ounces more of tradition than the Shaman. Now the steel backspacer offsets the blade steel, still puts the center balance about to the same place as the paramilitary 2. You gotta write about, right about there, balancing out that thicker, slightly larger blade. The Shaman has kind of a spear point blade, maybe a little bit of a drop point mixed in there somewhere, and then the LMAX steel. Now, LMAX, depending on the heat treat, of course, is generally thought to be slightly tougher, but has less edge retention than M390, you know, the, the popular steel now. A little bit better in edge retention than S35VN, but not quite as good as M4, and I'll link Knife Steel Nerd's article below to see if you interpret their data like I did. Now, the lockup 
on both is similar. A good compression lock on phosphor bronze washers needs to be broken in a bit and can rival a ball bearing system for quickness and fidgetability, the most important thing on a pocket knife. Being a little bit of a pivot adjuster myself, I did a slight adjustment on mine so the blade falls harder when the lock is pinched when you want to close it. Now what is noticeable is how the blade falls harder than on the paramilitary too. I assume because the blade is bigger and heavier, you know, from the side the blade is noticeably thicker and bigger than the PM2. Hell yeah, buddy, that's the hard use I've been telling you cucks about. You, you muscle wasting disease, you need more raw meat. Now it's an extremely fidgetable knife. You have the middle finger flick, you know, which is my favorite. You got a few pops there, you know, I've been doing some pops. Or the thumb flick, which is not as much of my favorite of a flick. Or, you know, you can, uh, you can do the finger pop. Now one thing that's not as easy is the compression pop, where you pinch and flick. Pinch and flick. The shaman has a larger tang that gets in the way in this area here where the compression lock is. It doesn't really happen on the paramilitary too. There's less room for your finger there, so you can't really pinch it as well. That's one thing I wasn't aware of before I got these two. Do we talk? Do the, do the influencers talk about that a lot? I'm not sure. And as a viewer, I'm really interested on how well they pinch it. But what they do talk about is the ergos. Influencers love their ergos. You know, your your influencers they place different emphasis on different things. I I spend most of my energy trying to work in a good poop joke somewhere. Now I've never found much of an owie part or I've gotten boo-boos from the pretty good ergos of the PM2. And that was even before I switched out my Blurple for some Flytanium scales. But the Shaman has more Sculpted G10, and I think that's what they like. The Sculpted G10 and the added weight, I guess it feels sure in the hand. It, it's not much of a larger knife than the Paramilitary 2, but it's heavier and you can grip it a little bit tighter. I think the theory is that the Shaman is a harder use knife, although I use these for about the same thing, the knives like this. They're both extremely nice, and the Paramilitary 2 is a classic. It is like the reference knife. If somebody's like, can you recommend me a knife? I have a little bit of money to spend. The Paramilitary 2 would be my go-to. Now, I'd say the PM2 is a little more lanyard-friendly if you're the lanyard sort type of person, since it has a protected lanyard sleeve back there. Although there's enough of a groove on the backspacer inside the shaman, the, the shaman, right? The shaman, the shaman, the shaman. It's, you know, shaman is not a word I use every day, okay? So sometimes I forget where the emphasis is. So you can put your lanyard rope, your string, your twine, your paracord, your human hair, whatever. Shouldn't encounter the blade even on the shaman. Now, have we talked about the pocket clip yet? Man, I've talked about a lot of stuff, I feel like. It's a Spyderco spoon clip. Looks similar to the, you know, one on the Tenacious, like the mounting hole style, but it mounts differently. Now, doing a 30-second search on the internet, well, it was more like two minutes, and a look at the Lynch Clips website, it's a different mount than other Spider Coast, so I don't think you can swap it. Some people will be like, well, you got two screws to line up on the... And Okay, that's fine. But I, I just mean that it looks like it's its own clip. But functionally and proportionally, it's like the ones on the Tenacious and the Paramilitary too. It looks pretty much the same. About an inch sticks out of your pocket. There are aftermarket options if you need that deep carry. I like uh, these style Spider Co clips pretty well. Sometimes they get snagged on stuff, but they're easy to remove, and they bend back, and they're always smooth and rounded. Spyderco knives, especially the Shaman, they have lots of aftermarket options, so if you get sick of your gray G10, you can swap it out for, I don't know, $600 titanium Damascus shit. Pretty and purple and swirly. More comparisons. It's been a comparison video already. We've seen these two together, right? You know, I think we're familiar with the, the Paramilitary 2 and the Shaman. How about the Para 3? The Shaman kind of dwarfs the Para 3. Now this is the natural M4 uncoated natural, I already said natural, G10, Jade G10 that I bought years ago. Pretty sure it was a Blade HQ exclusive. Don't really remember anymore as I'm getting older. Where I bought knives is is kind of is kind of fading from the memory and it gets replaced by, um, where did I put my keys? Long-term memory starting to go, you know, 43 this year. You know, one thing I've noticed about these compression locks is once the washer gets a little more used, they get a little more polished, they don't need a whole lot of lube. In fact, I prefer to run drier than lubier. Is lubier a word? Now, the Spyderco Military in 52100, also an exclusive, or was this a sprint run? I don't I don't even know. The idea is that they're both limited, okay? He's okay, they're almost the same thing. It's just the distribution model. Although, I do want a new military with the 
with the compression lock. Compression lock, it was a long time coming, right? I'm, I'm sure they had to make the native chief first and all those in between, the, the Dalek. No, no, the Dalek is something else. That's Keith the Knife Freak, the Dalek. Uh, whatever the, the Delica and the, and the, uh, the Delica, the Indela, okay? Well, they had to do the Indela before the compression lock military. That doesn't make a lot of sense. Now, how about the Benchmade Crooked River, full size? You know, I said I, I sold my mini a few years ago. I said it was it was my favorite Benchmade at the time, but I, I my my opinions have changed. Okay, I bought it, I liked it, I was like okay, and then it just you know sometimes you sometimes the heart changes what it wants. I think I was saving up for a deadlock, and I needed to get rid of a few, and that was I preferred the full size. You know what? Speaking of the deadlock, how about the deadlock? Let's do all USA here. Love my deadlocks, just love them. I had two deadlock sized holes in me and when I filled them there was another deadlock sized hole that, you know, can't afford that, but the soul wants what it wants. Wrapping it up, the shamans, the influencers know it, you know it, you already have three of them. I'm a touch more of a paramilitary two guy myself, you know, the, the non-sculpted handles and the little bit lighter of a weight are, are okay for me. But that's my opinion, some people love the shaman more, I see a lot of love for the shaman, I get it. They're wrong, but I get it. It's the bulbous curvy G10. It just does something to the brain. The Blade Ops version here goes live on Blade Ops on Monday the 22nd, and by God, I'm gonna get this video done before then. As you know, limited quantities is gonna, you know, are on these, so you know, move fast. And and if they like this video that I did, and you like this video, and you know, maybe I'll do more videos with them. Follow my link below the video, and you'll support the channel and tell them you like me, or. If you think I'm a chump and you hate my guts, Google it and go there separately to avoid giving me another damn penny. Say hi to the patrons. They've upgraded my channel into a very mediocre 4K version of the same channel. Same jokes. Haven't grown. That's maybe why views are down. I don't know. New camera and computer, though. Okay. You can be a patron for as little as a dollar a month. T-shirts are below the video. Those give me money, too. Or you can give me a tip in the little new button up top. It's called, like, Super Tip, Super Chump. I, uh... Hyper, I, it's not a subscribe thing. I don't know what the fuck it's called. There are a lot of ways to give me money, but you can also comment, give the video a thumbs up, click the bell. I love bell clickers because, you know, you get the alert when my video drops and you are the first to comment on it, and that is a very important thing on the internet. Thanks for watching.